Fine. You know what I mean. <laughs> we finish. We like suck it. at this, but yes, okay, go ahead. Right. <laughs> Why is this so hard? I don't know. This is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it to her now. <laughs> hey guys, Tosh and Gary here. Welcome back to our channel, Skyways to Highways. We are going to show you now some of our favorite things that we utilize in our hiker trailer galley kitchen on the road 12 weeks throughout the Southwest. And um, we hope you liked the video. We're gonna show you everything that we liked about them and uh, what we disliked, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the galley. Some of the things that I liked, as you guys know, the galley is my domain. I love to cook, and I have found some really great uh, tools that help me do that efficiently and quickly. And one of those is the Master Cook Station. Um, it's pretty awesome. It is a little bulky for, um, for traveling in the hiker, I actually don't store this inside the galley, um, although I probably could, but um, it's easier just for us to put it in our Jeep Rubicon uh, and keep it out of the way and it slides in next to our refrigerator. Uh, it does come in two sizes. I chose to get the larger size. Larger size comes with um, a sink as I will show you. And um, I gotta tell you, I did not use the sink uh, whatsoever. So if you wanna go with the smaller size, um, I suggest perhaps doing that and perhaps uh, it'll be smaller for you. So I'm going to show you how to set it up and uh, and how we use it on the road. A little lanyard that puts, uh, that keeps it from opening up. That's very simple. You just take that off and then... That's you, easier with two because it is big. It is much easier with two. It is um, a little bit bigger than um, I had expected. However, um, it definitely does have everything that I need uh, in the kitchen and uh, everything that I, that, I have, that, I, that I enjoy cooking with. So uh, prepping wise, fantastic. These tables here in the center, you have to pull one up. These little areas here. And then you've got side tables over here that pop up. The sink just, it opens up, it's got a drain hole, um, but this is like nothing. So this is kind of useless. <laughs> so if this, if this propped up and you could put something here, that would be, that that make, that would make this more useful. But it would, it we would. We didn't really use it. We didn't use it because we have, um, as I showed you in um, our last uh, galley video, our galley walkthrough, um, I do have two collapsible buckets, one for rinsing, one for washing. Those go right here on this shelf. They work perfectly. And then we have a drain uh, for the wash dishes that goes right here and it's perfect. But you've got a nice little pole here that you can uh, bring up. You can either put uh, your lantern here, um, this little hangy doohickey, which it took me a little while to figure out what this part did, but um, it locks in place. You can have it as short or as uh, tall as you like. And um, that is pretty handy dandy. So as much as I cook, I would say that I would still have gone with the smaller table. Uh, had I known how, um, you know, how bulky it was and that I probably wouldn't have used this little sink. But if you don't have the little collapsible sinks, you know, this is definitely the table for you because you can fill it with water. It has its own little drain. And, and it's pretty awesome. And it closes up pretty quick and easy. And it's, as we said, stores in our Jeep um, pretty easily. So the other thing about this galley that we decided to uh, to opt for was the um, the pullout table. Um, the pullout table, I'm a little um, conflicted on because it is handy uh, if you are uh, making something really quick, you know, like sandwiches or you know, for Gary, uh, instance, he uh, makes his coffee on it every morning. So it's great and it's handy. However, if you use bins underneath like we do, um, you have to be very careful in what bins you choose because clearance wise does um, make it difficult to pull these out. You have to pull them out in order and you have to put them back in order in order to accommodate for this table. The other thing that really drives me a little batty is that um, I have trust issues with this table because although it's great, um, you can't put a whole lot of weight on it. It is definitely 
a little wobbly, just a little wobbly. You have to be very careful because it may retract itself and everything that you have on here will fall off into the ground. The only solution that we've been able to come up with is a door stop. So we have two door stops. We take these and we put them in here, jam them into place. Um, and then you've got a little bit of a locking um, situation and, and it will keep it uh, in place to a certain extent. Again, if you make a mistake and bump into it, you're still going to have some issues, but at least it, it gives you a little bit of staying power. Um, so great table. I definitely think that they can do better on this and you can probably find a better solution. Uh, and if you do, let me know because I would love to know. Next, we're going to talk about our, um, our two burner stove. Uh, which is a cook partner. This stove is phenomenal. This is the spot that it stays in when we are traveling. Um, over here in the corner, it's out of the way. We have our cutting boards behind it. And what we use is one of those uh, contact um, shelf liners. And these are kind of a nice rubber uh, surface. It so keeps everything from shifting too much. And really quickly, I'll just show you this stove. This is a workhorse. It is a Cook Partner by Partner Steel Company. Okay, so you just push down on it to get it to unlock and you pull it up. You've got your windscreens here and there are these little uh, tools here in the corner with holes. You uh, put those in there. And these are not the greatest, um, you know, maybe if you have a little clip here, but I do find that every now and then on a windy day, uh, they definitely do come, uh, they definitely come out. So, you know, I would, you know, love to just bend these in a little bit and keep this from, from moving. But it comes with a propane um, valve. You can use that with your uh, propane um, if you have that option on your hiker. Uh, a lot of people complained that it was very hard to clean. And I thought that uh, you could not remove this. I think there was one reviewer that said that, you know, he was trying to clean it by going in between the grates. The grates come off very simply. Um, you just take this, so like this, pull this out, and then you are, uh, you know, able to clean all of this. Um, I would not suggest using any type of abrasive with this, just a dish towel, a little soap and water, getting the oil out, and uh, and it should be very simple. This goes right back in, um, and you kind of uh, use your fingers, angle it, and just push it right back in. It's very, very simple. Uh, no need to uh, worry about how easy this is to clean because it cleans beautifully. I use this a lot and I had no issues whatsoever. You know, one to five as to five being great. I'm giving this a five. Um, you know, maybe it's a little, you know, hard to adjust as far as temperature goes. If you're not used to um, maybe cooking with a gas burner at home, maybe uh, you have an electric stove. This is definitely a learning curve for you. You're gonna have to figure out um, how having such, you know, so much flame uh, is gonna work for you. Once you get used to it, trust me, this thing is a workhorse. It's fantastic and you will love it. On another note, I did wanna mention that um, we have the option of the shelving up here, which is great. Um, however, your clearance may be uh, a little low, so it is kind of hard to find um, a basket um, that's gonna fit up here. We got these from Ikea and they come folded uh, in this manner and you simply just pop these out. I think these were a little pricey uh, in my opinion. They were 12 bucks each. They were 13, uh, 13.95 I think they were. Um, so they were definitely a little pricey but these definitely work uh, pretty well as long as you don't stack them too high and they just fit right in here pretty easily. Um, if I find a better solution, I'll let you know. But these are Ikea, about $13, $14, and um, they're pretty simple. Bought the Iceco VL60 um, fridge freezer combination. In the back of the Jeep. It, li it lived back here for two months. We took it out uh, a couple of times when we were parked for a few days. And, um, but um, it's, it is a big fridge. It's heavy heavier than I'd like, um, but it does have a fridge, a big fridge fridge section. Um, you'll, you'll see how the container comes out. Um, the freezer section is good sized and it works well. People talk about the fact that they had problems with it 
vary in temperatures, like almost 10 degrees. Um, I did find that it would vary in temperatures on occasions, but the, when I found that it varied mostly was in the desert when it was really hot. So, I mean, I'm guessing that that probably is kind of normal. Maybe some other fridges won't vary as much, and this did vary maybe 10 degrees. Desert, like in, um, in, in, in you know, southern Utah. 100 degrees or so. 100, 105 or something like that. It would vary in temperature. It didn't seem like the temperature varied so much inside because it was full. You keep the fridge and freezer full. Um, it stays cold. Presser is probably the best on the market. Um, better even than the Dometic. Um, price point, half of what the Dometic the Dometic was. This ran about 750, I think, something like that. Um, you can look that up. It may have the prices may have changed or so. Um, but we really like the fridge. It's been great. And when we're not using it during the not camping, it'll be my beer fridge. Um, problem that I have is a couple of things. The AC plug. Uh, if you'll notice how long this AC plug is, when I plug it into the side of the of the uh, of the Jeep, as we drive down the road, this will jiggle. And because it doesn't fit tight, because it's so long, this section is so long, if you look, compared to other 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 AC plugs, um, it doesn't fit tight. And when it doesn't fit tight, it'll a little bit of a jiggle and it'll shut it off. So I'm um, not happy with that. I contacted Iceco and said they, that's the only plug they have. So um, this winter, I'm gonna be looking at finding, trying to figure out something uh, maybe there's an adapter that'll have a shorter plug-in that I can use. Um, you plug it into the Jackery, and it's, it's the same thing. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a tight fit. You'll see how jiggly it is. It's just not a tight fit, and it, and if you'll notice the Jackery, a little bit of a jiggle, it pops off. The fridge doesn't pull a lot of power. It just kicked on. Um, Output three watts right now. When it needs to kick on, it usually averages about 30 watts, 30 to 35, depending um, what it'll pull um, off the jackery. The advantage of this, the fridge is, is when you when it is when it is plugged into the uh, to the car, um, I do run a 75 watt uh, amp uh, AGM battery out of the Jeep because it pulls. And um, when this starts pulling too much off the battery, um, it'll just shut itself off, so it doesn't doesn't drain your battery on your vehicle on your tow vehicle and if you if it sits for an hour or so as you're parked and it's not on it's fine it stays cold and it doesn't take long to cool it back to, right back down when you start the vehicle again and that's our ice code vl60 from a cooking standpoint um i love this fridge i think that it's fantastic as far as capacity i think that it holds um it holds a lot it really does and I can stock this fridge for at least uh, a month, at least a month. And you can see how deep it is, how much room you have in here. This is the fridge side. You can adjust and it also gives you a, a list of what you can put in here and the temperatures for it, the recommended temperatures, which is great. The freezer side, you're not going to have a ton of room, but how nice is it to have ice uh, for your cocktails? Gary loves his whiskey with one cube, and I love to have uh, bottled water <laughs> ice cubes. I'm fancy like that. But um, I took the one um, uh, ice cube tray, I cut it in half, and I use this with bottled water so that I can have my fancy, you know, cocktail ice cubes without using uh, water from the, the tank, which is non-potable. The XL, by really, the way. You shouldn't be using that water for drinking. It's great, I guess, for, you know, dishes and for rinsing and all of that, but I would not use that water to drink with uh, as in making ice cubes out of. So as you can see, this is your top of the freezer space. You can see what that is. And then you have the depth here and this or uh, the rest of your freezer space. The compressor takes up most of the room out of your freezer. But if you want some ice cubes and you want just a few frozen things, like I'll put, um, you know, uh, frozen vegetables, uh, that you know we can have an emergency in case I can't get to the farmer's market, then uh, it's perfect. And then I just keep my little ice cube trays here and it's wonderful, but how nice is it to have ice cubes on the road? It's fantastic. And 
I love it. I'm very happy with it. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention, one of my cooking videos, I think you saw that I had some uh, cauliflower. It definitely, in heat, in, in you know humid conditions, you're gonna get a little condensation in here. You're definitely gonna have a situation where some of your veggies are not going to like uh, the condensation. And so, um, you know, I, I definitely did have an issue with that, but it's really not that big of a deal. But, you know, a fridge in 100 degree temperatures, you're gonna have that kind of issue. I think the ice coast definitely held up to how much I cook definitely held up to what we needed it for and I couldn't be happier. I'm definitely um, happy that we chose the Ice Coat over the Dometic. Uh, of course, I don't have a Dometic to compare it to, but the Ice Coat was clutch and a workhorse. So highly recommend. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, a couple of other things that I like using here in the galley. Uh, a couple of my favorite things. I call it my, my speed rack, but it keeps all of my essentials uh, my essential tools that I like to use for cooking. I hang it up here on this door and the doors don't take a lot of weight, but uh, as long as you don't overfill it, uh, it should be good to go. And let's just hang here, bring it down. But it holds everything that I use here in the kitchen. You know, my cutlery, you know, on here, the little pockets, you've got, uh, you know, ideas of what could go in here. So even on this little pocket right here, it says uh, forks, knives, and spoons, specifically for paper towels, as you can see, uh, measuring cups. Um, this is another thing that's kind of interesting uh, that I found. And this is a, uh, a laundry line. And this thing's pretty cool. I mean, you know, when you when you do a little bit of laundry and, you know, you just want to hang it, I hung this off of the back of the awning uh, right in the sun, and it works great. These were also handy dandy too, which uh, I did use quite a bit. Um, these are um, suction cups with a little carabiner lanyard on the end. And I used this on the door. Um, it's got a little cover here. This is really, really sticky and then it has a pressure gasket um, right here. And what I used this for was putting this on the back of the door here to the side of the trailer, and it would keep the door open because this door doesn't like to stay open. So this actually worked really, really well. The thing that this comes with is this little pouch. And in here, I keep all of my other stuff. So I've got all of my, uh, my chef's knives, you know, my tongs, this Velcro is really, really strong, uh, which is really kind of nice. You know, but all my tongs, my knives, uh, and everything else. I even have like a you know pastry roller, and um, you know, of course, in here you're gonna need your knives in some type of a uh, knife sleeve because you could end up cutting yourself pretty badly. But this goes. Um, it actually goes here at the end. Um, if you see these little toggles here at the end of, uh, of the speed rack and they just clip on here. I, I didn't really use it as much. I mean, I started using it in the beginning, but I felt like this is so full that um, I just didn't bother using it because it's also extremely low. It just goes too far down and then I would have to go dig in here. So I kept this in the galley, you know, on the side or down here so that I could get to things. Okay, my turn, <laughs> my turn. My little, what I did was, everybody wants a screen here, and of course, I can't sell. And uh, so what I did was took the measurements from this, uh, grabbed a little, uh, a little screen here, cut it, cut it to, cut it to size, folded it over, and I used uh, monkey tape or uh, monkey tape. <laughs> you know, gorilla. I used gorilla tape, and I taped it on both sides <laughs> all the way around, and it kept you from having to sew. But so um, it was an easy project in the in the garage one day, and then I just used Velcro on each corner, and we Velcro it in, and it worked perfect. Um, I was kind of impressed with myself. <laughs> when I did that. Um, so um, so I didn't have to learn how to sew or find somebody to sew for me. Okay, so next we're gonna show you uh, another one of our favorite products that we used in the galley. And that is my fantastic 
Timbo Tusk Scottle. It's a plow disc, and I'm gonna have Gary set this up. Comes with a lid and these little legs here. Gary's going to put on for me. And this is how we normally set it up. It's just easier to leave it in the bag. And we put the little legs on here. There are little eyelet holes. Can't really tell where the little point comes out. So I just put like a little arrow here with a Sharpie and you can just pull it up and then you can see where it comes out on the hole. You can utilize the propane tank that you have on your hiker trailer if you have that as an option. Or you can also use these little uh, propane canisters, which uh, makes it a little bit easier, but then, you know, no one recycles these, so you're kind of stuck with them. So I prefer to use it with a propane tank, but, you know, these are also just as easy. And these screws on the bottom. A lot of people say that they burn their food when they're using it. And, you know, again, it's just really just getting to understand how to cook with an open flame. And, you know, there is a little bit of adjustment, you know, the way it goes on the bottom, this little area right here, sometimes, you know, it's a little off center. So you just have to pay attention to where the centrally located most part of your tusk is. And you can see on mine, you know, this is pretty much where it usually is because this is where the darkest part is. So this is my hottest point. On the outside, uh, outer edge is a lot cooler. So that's kind of the staging area. But Tembo Tusk is uh, a fantastic, fantastic way to cook on the road in your trailer. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space and I guarantee you love it. So um, two thumbs up. Oh yeah, definitely two thumbs up. Two thumbs um, up. Yeah, she uses it on a daily basis for everything she can even think of cooking. We've, <laughs> she even made popcorn on it, which turned out really well. The I popcorn was really was surprised. Awesome. The popcorn was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's definitely a two thumbs up. Yeah, definitely. Well worth it. It's a, a little pricey, but uh, we found that uh, it paid for itself on a trip. Absolutely. Thanks for watching um, our little video here, the uh, things that we liked it with our trailer, uh, a few things that we purchased for our trip. And um, we tried to give you our honest opinion on the products that we used and hopefully it helps you on your next road trip. And um, don't forget to like. Yeah, and subscribe and leave us a comment. Yeah, please do. <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. One up and then the other, ow, that is my finger. Okay. Let me just, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I got Gary's running with that. Yeah. Um, right. And then you put, the, you put the lanyard on it. And um, yeah, okay. next. <laughs> I think. I think so. Ah. What happened? When I put that in there, I hit run it. Run it off the jack ring if you'll notice. And see, there it goes. <laughs> so, highly recommend. Done. Cheers. Cheers. Done. <laughs> I think it's time for done. a beer.